Welcome to the Cranky Cameraman. I'm David, Director of Photography, and I am selling my current camera truck, my little compact van. I love this van. I'm actually not ready to sell it, but uh, making some transitions in the business that necessitate a different vehicle. So this one, um, just getting it all cleaned up and ready to sell. This isn't a sales ad. I wanted to make this video to just run through the few changes I've made to this vehicle from stock to make it friendly for working in production. This is my, um, just a quick history, quick history. This is my fourth work truck for hauling camera and lighting equipment. My first was a E250 Ford Econoline, you know, traditional cargo van. And that one I built out wooden shelving and then it had a center aisle and a side door. So I had a cart, a grip electric cart that tilted in the side door and then a, like motor, two motorcycle ramps to roll a mag liner with a camera package up the rear door, center aisle, and then side shelving for all the, um, it was set up for milk crates and Kino flows and a small, I carried a 12 by and a six by in that van. Um, and then I sold that, upgraded to a Ford F-350 pickup truck. And uh, I was managing a generator rental company in parallel to shooting. So I needed a big heavy diesel truck that could pull an 18,000 pound, 1600 amp studio generator. So that was diesel and the gen sets were diesel. So it just uniform for towing and single fuel source for refueling was the motivator on that truck. And then I got an Isuzu NPR. It's a truck I had worked off for many years before I bought it. I knew the previous three owners. Um, so it was a 16 foot cube truck, eight foot high, eight foot wide, big seven foot cantilever lift gate. Built that out with a grip electric package. And uh, I could haul effectively two mag liners in the center aisle when I needed to also carry cameras. And then this is number four and this is the only vehicle in my life that I've uh, purchased new. All the other vehicles, personal and work, were used. And uh, so I've had this four and a half years, it's 2016. I had to order it from the factory. It was made in Spain and it took like almost eight months. I think it was a little seven months and two weeks until it came in um, because I wanted no windows in the cargo area for stealth and security just to minimize smash and grab actually had a smashed van window years ago, even though I had limo tint on the windows and we, I had the security cage inside the window. Um, so got smashed, I think just opportunist. So I've had good luck with this and I've parked in some very questionable areas, including overnight, um, but I wanted to design it so that the cab also, there's a Ranger partition. Highly recommend that brand. I've owned WeatherGuard, some OEM partitions and uh, another brand, I don't even recall, that's just straight vertical. And the beauty with this Ranger twofold, you've got much more seat reclining ability, which I'll get into in a moment when I get into the cab. But second, uh, they crash test their bulkheads, according to the sales rep I talked to at the factory. And so I felt really good about having this bulkhead in the truck in the event of an accident. So I was working on a shoot with a firefighter from Long Beach and he was super impressed with how I built out the truck and he uh, told me they respond to quite a few vehicle wrecks where uh, there's lumber or pipes in the back of a pickup truck and uh, they end up going through the driver and whoever's up front because you've just got a glass partition and that's not going to slow down a two by four piece of aluminum pipe. I don't know how much protection I'd get with the speed rail and the divider, because I mean, it's just eighth inch aluminum. However, um, I've been very conscious about having the pipe travel down at the floor on the sides. So the hope is if I get rear ended, it's gonna push the pipe. Uh, one, it's below your seated height and it'll push it along the side. And you know, hopefully it only, if it makes contact with something, it's a leg, you know, not center mass or a head, uh, but so important to have a partition between you and your cargo for safety. Uh, eight foot ramp, 
That is an aluminum trifold ramp. And uh, it's a wheelchair ramp. I got that off of a website called discountramps.com. I think it was only about $650 and uh, $200 for shipping. It actually may have been $650 including shipping. Uh, it was a great deal. I was uh, quite surprised by the low price point. And uh, there's another sound person in town that has that ramp. That's how I discovered the make and source. Um, she just, I think it's a five or 600 pound weight rating. For rolling camera stuff up, it's totally adequate. For pushing heavy grip electric carts and sandbags up, I think I'd go with a steel ramp. And a eight footer is not the recommended length for a small low deck van. I actually recommend a six footer. But you can see the profile here. Even with a 600 pound fully loaded cart, it's such a gradual incline. I have no trouble or back strain rolling the car up or down this ramp. And the six foot, you can see here, the six foot would uh, be at about this hinge point, significantly steeper. Here's the ramp in closed position. So we've got, uh, I believe it's six feet, two inches of little deck length at the floor. And you can see the partition flares out a little bit. So at mid height, you lose uh, maybe 10 inches maybe a foot, but uh, that ramp folded up, door closed. There's still room for a senior magliner with the red handles installed on the ramp side. And I can actually transport, for a while I would have the senior with a 24 inch top and lower shelf on the left side, driver's side, and then um, a rock and roller cart without any shelving on the right hand side. And with the rock and roller, the big rock and roller fully extended, still had about, uh, I think it stopped about here. So I still had a bunch more space to, for vertical items. I could stack tripods or just bulky items, a Pelican case or two, big Pelican roller. Um, actually, I used to keep my movie gimbal right here in a big uh, like square shaped case, plus the Magliner and rock and roller. Um, Clearance, uh, it's a little under, I think it's 46 and a half inches. The Ford's lower than the other brands. That's one negative, but um, no problem even with an innovative cart. Uh, it'll roll in fully built. You just have a, well, you can measure it based on 26 and a half to get through the doorway. And you can see you get uh, an increase once you clear the door. So I would, uh, when my Magliner was in here, I would have to, um, some of my camera builds, I could not leave them clipped in on the top shelf and roll up and in if I get too many accessories on the handle. And in those cases, I'd roll the cart in and then clip the camera in once the cart was secured. But if it's a low profile build, documentary style, I could roll the cart up and down with my cameras clipped in and built top shelf. Um, originally, I was gonna do an E-Track or an L-Track, like uh, logistic style, tie down strips, like two rows on the floor, and then just around the perimeter at mid height. And uh, turns out like I really didn't need to. I put a D-ring up here for my tool chest to keep it from tipping over. And then um, there's the four D-rings on the deck. And there's a couple of holes throughout the corners where you can put a hook in from a rope ratchet or ratchet strap. And uh, a little bit overhead as well. Um, it's totally adequate. I was never lacking for a tie down point. So didn't really see the need to just add more complexity to the truck. And actually these forward hooks, um, don't use them a whole lot. I end up just grabbing in this corner on each side of the plywood with a hook and doing a diagonal pull to pull the cart into the bulkhead and then towards the side of the van work quite well. And then um, the reason I put ply down is there was originally a soft squishy uh, bed liner and it had the well steps for passenger style. So what would happen is if a cart were in the truck and it shifted, it would fall into the wheel well. And then when you open the door, the cart starts to tip out of the, the truck. Or if it's a case, the cases will slide, fall in the well, you open the door, the case falls on the ground. So I flushed up the ply with the edges of the door. And then second, the carts that didn't roll well on the factory floor, it was too squishy. The wheels would cup into the floor and have a hard time rolling out. 
line the perimeter in a thin plywood. The reason for this, and I learned this on my first fan, is many areas on the exterior, the window cutouts, are just a single layer of sheet metal, like this area here. And the slightest bump from a case or a stand will dent the exterior. So by ply lining the interior, you keep uh, the outside clean. And you can see some scuffs and gouges there. Each of these I know would have resulted in a dent on the outside. I actually have a hole in the wood on this door. And that was from a, I had a folded up rock and roller cart stacked on top of some cases and it shifted and that went right through the plywood. But the plywood did its job, no damage. And actually this isn't ply, it's like a Luan. I'm not gonna do that again. I think next time I'll use a masonite material. It's a much harder compound. Um, this is plywood, much salt. Uh, more resistant to impact than the Luan I skinned on the interior. But I think next time I'm gonna use this type of material. It's like a masonite fiberboard, just because it's, it's a lot harder surface. It's not as resilient to water, but uh, it's also lower cost. And I think it's gonna be a little easier, cleaner to cut. All right, moving on to the driver's seat. So I've got some back problems, lower back issues, and I've got arthritis in my hips. So there are certain vehicles that just destroy me. And this is not one of them. I tend to have trouble with like uh, sports cars or like a compact car where the, the seat um, causes your feet, you know, you're sitting low on the deck and your feet, legs are extended for long periods of time. Like the way that puts pressure on my hips is uh, no bueno. So this seat is very much like a pickup truck or a commercial truck. Like your legs, you can put your feet at a 90 degree angle, I'm sorry, your knee bend, just like an upright chair, uh, say like an office chair. And I can roll the steering wheel forward so I have no problem controlling the pedals while being at essentially 90 degrees and upright. The seat's got lower lumbar support, which is adjustable. And then the recline is, um, pretty good for driving. So I'll, um, I just got back from Texas, which is an 18 hour drive. I did that over two days. I did it. My longest stretch was 13 and a half hours. That included some refuels, but throughout the course of that drive, you know, I, I would go uh, a full fuel tank, which would be like four hours of driving without a stop. And you know, I play with racking the seat forward and back. Um, if I get all the way back, recline the seat up, upright, you know, against the partition, and then, um, see, I can drive like a sports car style where my feet, or compact car, where my feet are extended. Get the blood flow going on my legs. I love that. And uh, then when that gets uncomfortable, you know, there's all the unsafe stuff too. Like I've done this to stretch. These are the long stretches of the 10 freeway. No traffic in a straight line, but just get a good stretch on. I can do the same on the other side. And then what's crazy too is there is a tremendous amount of headroom and that allows you, you can do like a little bit of an upright squat. I'm not saying any of this is safety might be questionable, but again, you're on the freeway in the middle of the desert and there's no cars around. I'll, I'll like essentially stand up and uh, just for a minute or two, same thing, just stretch, get the blood flowing, cruise controls going. Uh, here, let me see if I can do a selfie cam. I should have brought the GoPro. I don't know if you can see here. So I've got the seat all the way back so I can extend my legs while driving. And you can see I still got a pretty good recline on the seat. And uh, my normal driving position, let's see, you know, more of a, a 90 degree bend on my legs is about there. And that gives me you know, about that much recline. Get the pandemic belly going. Um, okay, so stand up, you can see here like, I still get good visibility of the road up here. And I don't know if you can tell, but my butt is, I don't know, it's maybe four or five inches off the seat, but you know, it takes the pressure off my hips and uh, feels like a squat. Like I've got the load is on my knees and my feet and my quads. And that just, just shifting the pressure on my hips. You know, I do this for a couple minutes. 
not even, you know, maybe a minute and I feel so much better and I can sit back down in the bucket and I'm good for another 45 minutes. So what's interesting is this is a compact car. It fits in those little subcompact spaces in parking garages and I've got low clearance. Never had a height issue. I'm shorter than um, SUVs, full-size SUVs. And, um, and yet it's got significantly more leg room than a full-size van. Uh, Transit, Promaster, Sprinter, the old school Chevy and uh, Econo lines, um, more space. It, it's really deceiving. Same thing with the cargo area. It's been rare that I haven't been able to fit all of my kit for a job in the van. The one problem is seamless paper. If I get a call for that, it doesn't fit because I only have six feet. And if I diagonal, I can't quite get an eight footer in there. I have to leave a door cracked open in the back. Um, and you could do a roof rack, but I didn't want to do that because this truck for me was all about stealth wanted to be able to park anywhere and just blend in, not have minimize the security concerns. And then also very important, park it in my garage when I'm at home, because I didn't want to leave gear in the truck, in the driveway or in the street. Well, four and a half years behind the wheel, this little van, many three hour commutes one way. And um, like I said, very comfortable with the cab, deceivingly spacious for a compact vehicle. And uh, yeah. Don't overlook these little vans if you're looking for your next uh, work vehicle slash daily driver. And um, in an upcoming video, I'll cover my next truck I'm in the process of upfitting right now. And uh, let me know your comments below. What kind of rig are you driving? And thanks for watching.